Good morning, sorry about that. Welcome everybody to the August meeting of the Commission on Aging Well. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. And our first agenda item is the approval of the minutes. Everybody has had a chance to look at those minutes on, uh, that Jill had sub, you know, submitted online. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Barbara, you usually have something. I do not. <laughs> Okay, do I hear a uh, motion for approval? I so move. Second. Do I hear a second? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Minutes passed. There are no public appearances for non-agenda items, um, so we will move uh, directly to our resolution R140-21, an addendum to the Senior Center Dane County contract. Jill, you want to take care? Okay, so um, you guys are familiar with the Dane County contract that funds nutrition and case management. And this year we had um, been awarded $92,299 um, for those services. And we had been approached by Dane County um, several months ago to pilot uh, something called My Meal My Way, which is the congregate meal at High V. So we've implemented that or started that in July. And um, in order to do that, these kind of pilots is, is run a little bit differently. So the money that we get for nutrition right now, that goes into like um, admin, salary, that sort of thing. Um, any donations that we take in for congregate meals and home delivered meals here at the Senior Center go right back to Dane County. Um, it's all a donation and they fund that. But this nutrition money that we get stays um, with the city to fund the things that I talked about, the salaries. Um, that total was 31,461 for this year. So with the My Meal My Way, it's a different kind of pilot where we actually, the city is gonna pay high V for the meals each month so the county just is going to front load us with that funding. And so we can use that funding to pay the meals each month. And so they sort of looked at our congregate meal numbers and they just estimated how much we might spend um, on the meals at High V. And so what happens is the county negotiates a reimbursement rate with the restaurants. I can't guarantee that every um, every reimbursement rate of every restaurant in Dane County is the same because I know that, you know, Oregon has a My Meal My Way with a restaurant, um, DeForest has one, um, and then here in Madison we have them in Fitchburg and then the two other uh, hy in Madison have them. But anyway, so that's between the restaurant and Dane County what that reimbursement rate is. Um, but anyway, so they, they are going to addend our contract and increase it by 10000 $920, um, they're gonna give us that money now, and that's the money that we'll use to pay high V every month. Um, if it looks like we get towards, uh, we start to run out of money because we're piloting this through the end of the year, the county will give us more money, so we'll see another addendum. If numbers aren't you know, great and um, we have money left over, then we will then cut the city a check, I mean the county a check um, for the difference of what we didn't spend. So again, it's just a little bit different um, of how the nutrition sites are run here and how those meals are paid for versus the my meal, my way. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's how it's gonna go. I can say that um, numbers have been pretty steady. I went last time, I went last week for the first time just to get a feel of how it goes and it was pretty interesting. Um, and we had 40, I think 45 or 47 people show up. We're seeing a lot of Belleville people. So anyone can come, it doesn't have to be um, Fitchburg people. Anybody can come to this high V. They can go to the high V on the west side or even the east side. Um, in fact, anybody can eat anywhere at any meal site. Um, but Belleville has done a lot of promotion of this because they don't have a restaurant that they can do that. 
um, in Belleville. And so their folks are really excited and you know, a lot of, we hear a lot of like, this is our day to go into Madison, so now we just get a meal and then we do our errands and that kind of stuff. So we're seeing, I bet, eight, nine people from Belleville every week. Um, so maybe our average is, I would say, in the high 30s. I think yesterday they had about 33 people. We always seeing maybe one or two new people. We're starting to see a lot of regulars. Um, and again, our bus is able to pick up folks that don't have transportation and take them over to Hy-Vee. Um, and so we're seeing between, you know, four to six people doing that. Um, so anyway, uh, we will pilot it through the end of the year and then see how it goes after that. So again, that's what that money um, is for, or the addendum is to pay for those meals and uh, it'll all balance out in the end. So any questions? Yeah, um, uh, currently we're in the middle of a, a resurgence of COVID mm -hmm. and some folks are reluctant to do indoor dining. Um, does Hy-Vee have outdoor dining at all? No, I've never seen that there. Mm -mm. So yeah. there may be, once COVID is over, there may be a, a significant change for, you know, uh, people added in uh, who are reluctant right now to do indoor dining. Yeah, that possibly could yeah. be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, do we uh, hear a motion to approve this uh, um, this resolution? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, resolution passed. Next agenda item is a report from the Senior Center Friends from Marsha. Good morning. Um, I guess the, we had a meeting last week and uh, I can report that there were no special needs expenses in July, which is uh, very unusual, but we'll probably have some to report next month. Uh, we did receive donations in the amount of about $150. The um, membership uh, nominations committee has recruited enough, I believe enough new members that uh, we will be fully up to the 15 number that we require and, and we like to have to start and the new ones will start in October. Um, we are going to celebrate National Senior Center Month. I mentioned this last month. Uh, we actually have five restaurants lined up in for September, the Wednesdays um, of the month. Panera has a fundraising uh, capability. And so I went online and filled out an application. It's for some of their slower hours. Uh, it's gonna be the 1st of September from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then we have me and Julio, Benvenuto's, Funk's Pub is gonna make the offer of fundraising for the whole week. Um, that would be the, the fourth week, I guess, of, of September. And then the Hop House on the last Wednesday. Um, all you need to do is mention uh, that you're there to for the Friends fundraiser and a percentage of the food bill will benefit the friends. We are in the process of developing our own brochure. Over the last few years, the Senior Center has had some nice uh, brochures, as does the library. Uh, but we are not uh, a city department, so we are developing a brochure describing who the friends are, what we do, and uh, it could be used to solicit donations. Um, Travel, the travel committee has been working hard. They have a, a travel show set for uh, August 25th at 1 p.m. at the center. The uh, tour to Western Canada, which was set to depart in mid-September, it originally was scheduled to go in July of 2020. It was rescheduled to July of 2021 and then moved forward to September. Uh, but now it's officially been canceled because um, of just the low number of travelers, not simply because of COVID. 
or the Canadian border. The next trip that's scheduled departs for New England in early October. This is a repeat of a tour that was taken in October of 2019, which is the last time I went anywhere. And uh, so it's, it's, it's when you go and, and you, you, you're a leaf peeper, you look for the beautiful leaf color in New England. It was a, a very good trip. I'm glad, I'm glad I went. I hope that the next group uh, will enjoy their trip. And then the day trip that we're working on um, is to see, is set for December 4th matinee, and it's at Xavier High School in Appleton. It'll be a bus tour with lunch and tickets to see um, a Christmas program. It's called Christmas Stars and it'll be limited to 50 people. And I believe that's it. If there are any questions. Marsha, how many, oh, sorry, Jim. How many seats did you have to fill? 50, five zero. Oh, I'm sorry, no, on the board. <laughs> oh, on the board. Was it six? Actually, um, five. five, I'll say five. Okay. There were actually six, but. Okay. Um, Someone who was going to roll off said she would fill this one last year of a of okay. one person. Uh, so that's pretty. That's great. Yeah. Because there yeah. was so we'll concern. have a lot of new members. Okay. Awesome. I had a question on the uh, on the day trip. Um, mm -hmm. Would that be a, a bus trip leaving from the senior center? Yes. It's uh, it's it's a Saturday. Uh, so, um, so it'll leave from the, probably from the senior center. I don't think the, we're hiring a bus uh, from, I think, Badger Bus. And, um, and so they're talking to a restaurant about, uh, you know, can we get a limited menu? And, and so, yeah. Okay, thank you, Marsha. Anybody have mm -hmm. any questions for Marsha? If not, let's move on to Joe's uh, report from the director. All right, um, let's see, just some program updates. Uh, the August newsletter is out. And um, I'm so thrilled that um, the medical students that we're working with, um, I think this is my third round of students. We work with two of the UW, their second year medical students. and. Um, we, we kind of give them some guidance about what we think might be popular. So they're doing a brain, uh, kind of a brain health series. Um, and we've got 25 registered um, and now we're, and we're at capacity and now we're taking Zoom registrations only. So we're doing a hybrid, but super popular. People are still calling. So we get two new students um, in September or October for the next session. So we might repeat this one. So it's, it's really fun to see um, that people are really interested in that and um, and it makes them feel good and they're learning what services are available at the center. And I think that is just a, a two-way street. It's a, it's a good way to expose them to services. So often physicians and nurses, hospitals, they don't realize what services are available at a senior center. So um, thanks to FACT TV, uh, they're doing an iPhone class and we've got 27 registered for that. Um, over half of them are doing it via Zoom. Um, and I just got a new iPhone that I still, so I might be registering. So if you, it's called, I did, my kids made me get an iPhone, now what? Like I feel the same way. So anyway, very popular class. Um, so thank you to FACT TV. Um, they'll be handling that. Um, I strongly encourage you to attend um, our Fitchburg singers that will be singing at the center on August 19th at 11. It's their first um, performance and they're super excited. And, um, you know, I know that people are worried about COVID and um, so I tried to let, let the group know because it's a group of about 30 or 35. My goal is always to have more in the audience than, in, you know, that are singing. <laughs> um, so hopefully if you're around, you can stop over on the 19th. Um, just a little update about COVID, um, you know, we are following the Dane County Public Health Guidelines. Um, we are encouraging people to wear masks. Um, so we're not mandating it at all. And we're seeing a real mixed response. Um, probably less masks than more, I think, um, but it's very mixed. Um, and 
we will wait to see if we get any guidance from Dane County, you know, before um, they gave us guidance about home delivered meals and, you know, only there was a no contact and we had to bag them and put them on the doors. And um, so I haven't seen anything come down from that. Um, the, the transportation, they're not social distancing, but they are, and they're not limiting how many can be on the bus, but they are requiring masks. Um, our staff is wearing masks just to, um, be as safe as we can. So we're, we're getting questions, you know, do I have to put this on? And no, you don't have to, um, but it's highly recommended. So that's where we're at, unless um, the city changes anything, but they've always, since the beginning, have followed Dane County Public Health Guidelines. Um, just briefly, we've been working on the mission vision statements that I'll bring to the Commission on Aging next week. Um, we have an awesome group that has come up with some really progressive um, vision and mission statements. We've always had a, a mission statement, but we've never had a vision statement. So it's, it's really fun to see these two connect. And once that gets approved, then we can move forward on, you know, building a new sort of strategic plan of moving forward. Um, and, you know, I, I send Linda stuff about uh, livable cities, I'm hoping to incorporate a lot of that in the way that we, we grow. Um, so, I'm excited about that, and so next next month we'll talk about that. Um, we've talked about transportation quite a bit. Um, I did reach out to our uh, alderman, Dave Herbst, about thoughts about how we can maybe fund transportation moving forward, maybe using um, contributions from senior housing developers, and, and just kind of exploring different options to really um, meet the needs that we have now and the increased needs that um, are coming down the pike. I talked to the Boys and Girls Club this week as well because we've always used them for Hispanic bingo transportation um, because they can get everybody here at the same time. Um, right now they're in the, um, in the midst of trying to hire drivers. Um, as everybody, they don't know what's gonna happen in the fall and how they're gonna use those drivers or all the kids gonna still come back to the club. Um, or not, they're doing sports, but I don't think they're open for the day-to-day -day stuff. They did do their summer camp, so um, so anyway, um, I like collaborating with them. They're nice to work with, um, and we're gonna look at, um, in our conversation, Tiffany, who I work with, she wanted us to look at some programming on site there, which we, we did in the past look at, um, and, and a lot didn't come to fruition, so we're gonna revisit that. Um, they have staff there, and they have a lot of great space um, so, so we might look at that and do some programming offsite. Um, and, you know, I'm also talking to another director in Dane County who has purchased a bus and just kind of bring some information forward about that. Because again, I think the more options we have on the table and, um, you know, cost ideas and that sort of thing, um, the better as we move forward and try to meet the needs of transportation for seniors. Um, we're also, I um, am working with finance to look at accepting payments online through the city system. Um, they do have it set up where you can pay your utility bill online um, and other things. And so we wanna tap into that um, because I feel like we're, we're pretty progressive in what we do, but that we are like very archaic um, and we're getting a little bit of pushback from participants saying this is, you know, really, really? <laughs> And so, and my response is, it's not as easy as you think to just kind of make all this happen, but it, it's been, um, a gentleman came in this week and was pretty upset about it, and luckily, I had it on my list, and I showed him. <laughs> I wasn't just making it up, I was like, listen. <laughs> and so, I moved it to the top of my list. Um, so anyway, working on that, um, the referrals are, they're really coming in um, a lot of re new referrals. Um, since July, uh, we've had 18 since July 20th. And that doesn't mean they're all complex case management. Um, a lot of, um, lot of referrals with people with dementia. Um, police referral yesterday, I won't go into a lot of detail, but uh, it's just interesting and, and you know, maybe it's, it's the impact of COVID, uh, but we're just seeing a lot more referrals coming in um, on the social work side most recently um, that are more than just, um, a lot of them are, I need a ride. We're getting a lot of calls about transportation again to medical appointments. Um, but anyway, so that's keeping Amy and Sarah busy and uh, 
tomorrow we have a Zoom call with our SVP who does all the medical rides because I have a feeling they're going to pull back again, which really leaves us um, with hardly any transportation to get folks to the doctors. Um, so we'll see what happens with that call tomorrow. So um, let's see, working with the bilingual um, cultural diversity, or the cultural diversity, the um, Hispanic cultural diversity staff from Newbridge, Madison. They were awarded a grant um, from the city through the Healthy Neighborhood Initiatives. And um, they're trying to uh, do more outreach to our um, Hispanic population. And so I uh, had a Zoom with them this week as well in terms of doing better outreach in our community. We're gonna look at not only the Hispanic bingo we've always done, um, but they wanted to do a grandparents raising grandchildren sort of support group. Um, and we're looking at some other programs, um, but really right now it's just getting, getting the word out. And um, you know, again, COVID just kind of changes everything in terms of in-person versus um, online or Zoom. And I think other than that, um, budget, budget meetings start next week. Um, and so that's in the, in the beginning stages. And then the county budget will start doing some advocacy usually in September um, for increased funding for case management, um, nutrition, and the mental health program. So that's where that's at. I think that's all I have. Okay, i uh, point of clarification. Did you say um, the uh, mission vision uh, draft would be available next week or next month? Next month, I'll send it with the packet next okay. month. Yeah, and then we can have the discussion and you know, if we don't wanna approve it at that meeting, um, we can wait until the next, so. Okay, any questions for Jill? Okay, uh, any announcements? I have one, the, the Active Women's Group has been working on a speaker series on uh, waste management solutions. And so I just thought I'd share this in case it goes beyond the, the group. In uh, this month's, the August 24th meeting, we are going to have the uh, solid waste engineer for Dane County, Sujata Gautam, who's going to be talking about talking trash with, with Sujata Gautam, Look, talking a little bit about the entire waste management system in, in Dane County, as well as some non-traditional recycling that they do. And she'll also talk a little bit about their on-site tours and their mobile trash lab, which I think would be a really good thing next year to think about bringing to the community center, maybe be uh, uh, do that jointly with the library. So it'd be something to, to think about for next year. The September 28th meeting is on recycling. So Claudia Guy, the environmental engineer for the city of Fitchburg, and Joe Spare from Palatari will talk a little bit about what can and cannot be recycled. And I think that's something that a lot of people are always interested in. And so this has not just a, an audience of the active senior, uh, the, the, the women's group, but it might might have interest to other people as well. So just thought I would raise those. So this is gonna be open to the public, not just the women's group? It's, it's up to you. We, we have not discussed that with the, the women's group. Mm -hmm. I was just working on the speaker series, but it seems that there is some interest. Yeah, I think that would be fabulous. I think these are great topics. And, and I just wanna mention that this is how awesome our volunteers are. And this is what makes our, per like, Linda's doing all this, and it just makes us look so good. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I think this is a great topic. Um, you know, we've been recycling plastic bags down there for a while, and we had um, our UW, our, our student volunteer who's going off to UW, so we'll figure out a different way. Um, but then we had a, a participant come in, and she was showing this awesome um, mat that they make, they crochet these plastic bags for the home, they make these sleeping mats for the homeless. And um, I was just, I've, they've been around for a while, I just hadn't seen one up close, but they are fabulous. And so she's gonna come and show our knitting and crocheting group um, these, these mats and what a great way to use all these plastic bags that we are collecting um, and recycle them into something so awesome. Um, I think it's a nationwide group or, you know, there's a, um, 
other groups that do this, not a ton in Madison. Um, so anyway, I just, I love the idea of all the recycling stuff. So, and I think if you guys are open to it, I think this would be, be fabulous to offer to the general public, so. Okay, other announcements? Our next meeting will be September 9th. So we'll see everybody then. Um, do I hear a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>